Hello, my name is Max Roher. I'm a certified sommelier and uh, currently finishing up my diploma with the WSET. I also run a blog on my website about different wines of the world. Uh, a few months ago, I did a, a post on uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and uh, it caught the eye of one of the larger producers in New Zealand named uh, Villa Maria and they contacted me and said, well, to send you some of the wines and you can taste them. Uh, so pretty amazing stuff. Uh, blog really does uh, give you some cool opportunities. So a little bit about New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, of course. Um, the main grape, in, it's a relatively new occurrence in New Zealand. Uh, most of the island was planted to a variety called Müller Thurgau, uh, which is a German or Austrian variety. It made pretty cheap stuff and uh, most of it was drank locally, so no one really knew about it. Uh, in the early or mid 1970s are when the first vines are planted, uh, maybe the late 70s. Uh, and in around 1985, uh, the most famous brand, Cloudy Bay, comes out with uh, Sauvignon Blanc, very fruity wine, and they can't keep it on the shelves, and the whole thing uh, explodes. Uh, also in 1985, I believe, they, were, they created the New Zealand Wine Growers, which are a group of about a thousand people, uh, producers, and growers and uh, advocates and they uh, you know sell New Zealand wine as a whole so instead of you know um, selling the wine with kind of a concept of terroir like this wine tastes because of this and this wine tastes that way because of that they kind of said all wines from New Zealand are great um, and just push the whole the whole country as a whole uh, they limit how much uh, New Zealand can export so a lot of course a lot of people see New Zealand New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc selling really well and they want to uh, you know make some as well, uh, but they are only limited how much they can export and so they don't want to export anything of poor or lesser quality because uh, it would hurt the image, um, and they don't want to export too much because they'll become a, they'll be a glut or a surplus and uh, with that. Um, wine would have to be discounted, and then the consumer kind of expects discounts all the time once a wine has been discounted. Um, and so those are some of the you know, reasons there. We're going to try four Sauvignon Blancs. This is their whole lineup of Sauvignon Blancs, which is really great they would send this to me. Uh, I'll explain kind of where they're from. This is a back map here of New Zealand, and as you can see it's kind of uh, two islands. Uh, these wines come from the South Island, which is down here. Uh, this purple region right here is called Marlboro, and that's where these wines uh, all come from. So that's an area known for Sauvignon Blanc. It uh, makes the majority of the world's, of, of the uh, country's wine. So we will try uh, the first one here, which is called uh, Private Bin. This is a wine I have a feeling you can find probably the most common in stores. I'll bring the label up here for you. Villa Maria Sauvignon Blanc Marlboro 2016 and uh, it says private bin there on the bottom. So just smelling this wine I can kind of tell what it's going to be like. Uh, I get grapefruit, kind of lemon, maybe a little mandarin, orange. Maybe there's a little bit of a uh, like floral note to it too. So I would say maybe like lilacs or something uh, like that. And so pretty simple nose. The try to just tastes like Sauvignon Blanc that no one has messed with. So I would say this is a high acid uh, wine, uh, thin body, has a little bit of maybe peach, maybe uh, bell pepper finish, which is typical of the variety. The high acid makes it really refreshing. I think this would pair well with uh, maybe goat cheese, salad, maybe a minestrone. It's a great Sauvignon Blanc. I believe it retails for somewhere around $12. My second one here that we're going to try is called uh, the Cellar Selection. Marlboro. So I got a feeling this one's a little bit of like a reserve. Um, this is kind of the basic one. This one might be a little bit more difficult to get. I'll show you the label as well. Villa Maria Sauvignon Blanc Marlboro, also 2016. And it says seller selection uh, on the bottom of the bottle. I apologize, it's 2015.
Um, so we'll smell this one. It's maybe a touch darker in color. These are mostly pretty uh, kind of lemon green or pale uh, wines, but this one has just maybe a little bit more color on it. Uh, this has a much riper or tropical uh, smell to it. I think uh, like lychee, like uh, pineapple, a little mango maybe, uh, bananas. Uh, soft pear. It's very different. Um, this second wine here is much rounder. Oh, there's a lot more body to it. Uh, the acidity is lower as well. Um, it's almost like uh, getting close to like what a Chardonnay might be like. In fact, if you have friends who love Chardonnay, this might be a good Sauvignon Blanc to bring over to their house. Um, I think everybody would enjoy it. Preparing, I would say, this wine with its more body can probably stand up to uh, things like scallops or lobster uh, or fish or perhaps, uh, perhaps even chicken. So I would say uh, we're moving kind of in the realm of Chardonnay again. but a good pairing wine. This might be good for just hanging on a beach or a boat in the sun, drinking something that's easy and refreshing to drink. This one's a little more complex, could be used for um, you know, cooking, maybe dinner. Uh, the third one coming up here is a single vineyard. So there's been a lot of, um, people have been, have been talking that there's a lot of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc coming out. Most of it's blends, and people argue that some of them are maybe becoming a little bit generic. Uh, so the, the answer has been to come up with single vineyard wines. So you can see this one here is a single vineyard. It is a Taylor's Pass. Is the, uh, and that is a 2016. So this comes from a single vineyard. I find that really interesting. Most of the wines in Marlboro are, come from the main valley, which is called Wairu, which uh, has more breeze. There are some side valleys in there. One of them is called... Uh, Awatere, and uh, that um, that is a single vineyard. Taylor's Pass makes it sound like it's high up, so I can imagine maybe um, kind of a single vineyard wine. So let's try it out. Well, the smell of this is kind of the nicest so far. I'm thinking kind of. Uh, Midway between these two, actually. So I'm thinking kind of um, kiwi, maybe uh, passion fruit. You know, I could really smell the gravel. Uh, I just imagine like wet gravel by Creekside um, actually smells just like that kind of river rocks. If I get a floral note off this one too, I think of just like white flowers in an alpine meadow, kind of a high altitude meadow um, comes to mind for me at least. Trying the wine, um, hmm, that's really good. I would say um, it's kind of between these two. This one was kind of high acid and low body. This one was kind of uh, a lot of body, but kind of lower acid. I would say this one's kind of in the middle. So I'll put medium plus acidity, medium plus um, uh, body to it. Um, this one's very different than the other ones. This one's kind of uh, has minerality to it. So we might argue that this one here is the Sauvignon Blanc in its most purest expression with kind of nothing done to it. This one here is kind of what a winemaker might do to it, um, giving it body and, uh, and, and from riper fruit. Uh, this is a single vineyard wine. Um, this one has minerality and sense of place. So I can actually taste the stone in here and know that it comes from one place that, you know, tastes specific uh, to this. Um, it's a really great wine. If I was to compare this to like a Chardonnay, I would compare this maybe to like a Riesling. Um, fantastic stuff. This one I would plan, um, this one would go well with maybe baked goat cheese. I would see it uh, being great. Uh, fish, 
uh, into pork. I can see it's going well with pork with like an apple uh, chutney or something like that. The fourth one we have here is sparkling. So this is the uh, Bubbly Sauvignon Blanc 2016. I haven't had this yet, it's sparkling. So these ones I opened up about a few minutes ago just to uh, figure out what kind of order I should taste them in. This one, of course, being sparkling, I want to hear if we can hear the, the pop as I open it. No, not much. So, um, let's see a little bit of gas come out. This one here is about 12.5%. These two are about 13. This one's about 12.5% as well. So good for making sparkling wine. It smells like grapefruit, citrus, lemon, lime. Uh, don't really get much else but fruit from it. But it's pretty small bubbles. I can't say that it's fully sparkling. Um, you can see that it's already gone kind of uh, flat. So uh, it's slightly sparking, sparkling. Uh, Petalant or uh, frizzante, as Italians say, which is kind of a lighter sparkling wine. Uh, it has great acidity to it. Acidity is key in sparkling wine. Otherwise, uh, it just tastes strange. This is a great wine. Um, I enjoy this as well. It's just simple. Again, this is sinus number to the first one. I think it sells for about $15 or something like that. I'm not sure how easy it is to find. But you got kind of a great lineup here, kind of going from uh, simple to complex uh, wines, and, and sparkling is uh, certainly fascinating as well. These are um, all good wines, and I'll have a kind of a certain place for them. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you to Michael uh, Kirstein for uh, sending me these four wines. Um, and uh, I'll keep making these blogs if you keep watching. Thank you so much.